It's the most wonderful time of the year. And welcome to another edition of The Locker Room. And yes, it is not Christmas season, it is football season. The most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> and I am one of your hosts tonight, Kyle Anderson, and join me as always. It's Brandon jo- Jones checking out The Locker Room. <laughs> Matt Hirsch, and it's the ha- happiest season of all. <laughs> and Reggie Huffman, who he's not going to be with us tonight. Apparently, he this is not his favorite time of the year. Yeah, so. He's a basketball yeah, player. Sorry, is that I basketball know. envy he has? I know. Tell him, hey, just be like Vanderbilt fans. Got to wait till November before anything really matters. And so tonight we'll be talking about college football. Most importantly, we're going to be diving into every conference. Figuring out what do we think is going to be the two teams that are going to come out to be the best. Who's going to win it? And eventually, we're going to tell you who we think is going to be in the national championship game in Miami. But as always, we're not going to BS you. We're going to get down to the nitty-gritty, and we're basically going to pick who we think is the best. So we're going to start out, go all the way out to the West Coast, into a conference that pretty time, pretty much this time next year, not going to be there. That would be the Western Atlantic Conference, or the WAC as they call it on the street. They're, so They're still playing football? Apparently they are. I don't know if uh, just for one more year, and then eventually they're going to make their way out of there. So what, as most people know, the WAC eventually starting next year, I think is going to be dissolved. Uh, some of the teams like Fresno State, San Diego State, they're going to be leaving. Um, there's rumors that they don't know if San Diego State will go to the Big East. I think, Brandon, you were saying that off mic, that that deal may actually be on hold. Yeah, that, that deal is on hold. The original deal was for San Diego State and Boise to pack it up and go to the Big East. Uh, with the Big East losing a few of the teams that really made the Big East the Big East, and now the Big East is uh, auto bid into the BCS is kind of in question. It kind of makes sense to go to the Mountain West because you look at the Mountain West, it's probably stronger than this new Big East. Right. Well, and also just a disclaimer to our listening audience. One of the reasons we're wanting to go ahead and talk about the WAC is you know, we want to get it out of the way because we know y'all don't really care as much about the WAC. Not many people care about the WAC. Not many people realize they're going to still play football this year after the news came out that they're moving on. They're going to shut down football next year. So we're going to go ahead and get that one out of the way. Now we'll go ahead and start off, guys. Who do you think, Matt, I'll go with you first. Who do you think is going to win the WAC this year, come out on top? They're still playing football? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, just uh, – you know, that's one that it's hard to gauge. You know, not many people study up on the WAC. I don't really study up on the WAC. Um, it's probably going to be either Louisiana Tech or uh, or Utah State. Um, one of those two. So I'd probably say Louisiana Tech just because I'd like to see a Southern team kind of win. Brandon, I would say Louisiana Tech repeats as WAC champion. Uh, Louisiana Tech is one of those teams that pretty young last year. Uh, they gave TCU all they wanted in the bowl game. Right. Um, this is the swan song before they leave and go to con- go to Conference USA. Uh, Louisiana Tech has the most talented team in the way. You know they'll make a lot of noise when they get to the Conference USA. Yeah. Oh yeah, I think they very well could uh, be one of those teams like Tulsa did when they first came in. They could actually end up running Conference USA for a couple of years, especially with the teams that are leaving Conference USA. We'll really see what Louisiana Tech's made of that first week. Because they could really play Texas A&M very closely. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that they have the potential to upset Texas A&M. Right. The one thing that might kind of get in their way when they join Conference USA is is their coach still going to be around because he's done a fantastic job. Mm-hmm. That's very true. But we now know that, that for the last season of the WAC, we all do agree it's a consensus that it's going to be the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs are going to be WAC champion. Shout out to my boy Zach Champion, former quarterback. Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Shut up. Now, now we're going to move on to one of the big conferences that everybody's been focusing on that they say the winner of this conference could end up in the national championship game in Miami. That's the Pac-12. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the North Division. Um, guys, the the teams that are in there, Matt, who is right now right off of, let's find out. Let's name all the teams that are in that top division. You know, I know we got Oregon. Uh, in the North. In the North, uh, yeah. Well, it's basically the Oregon schools, Oregon, Oregon State, the Washington schools, Washington, Washington State, and then the two northernmost California schools, that'd be California and Stanford. Now, guys, I'll go ahead and start. Brandon, I'll start with you first. We'll go ahead and start with Washington State. You got 
Mike Leach, first year pilot he, ships and all. Right, he's coming to. He's going. He's going to. Uh, was it Pollock or Pollum or what? Pullman, 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 Washington. You're pulling them, I guess. Well, I guess. here's the thing. Pullman's named after the guy that started the rail car company. Yep. Yep. See, and now you know, guys. Now you know. You learned something here. Listen to this show, guys. Now, how do you think his offense is going to fare in the Pac-12? I mean, he did do some damage in the Big 12, but you know, this is they're going to swing their sword. No, I don't. Yeah. If you ask this question five years ago, people say he's going to do awesome. The Pac-12 is starting to do things a little bit differently. I mean, remember, they were always the lead that was perceived to throw it around, and we're trying to kind of figure out figure it out on defense. Well, that has changed over the past few years. And you're starting to see Pac-12 teams ranked in that top 25 when it comes down to defense. So how his offense is going to do, eh, it's questionable. I think he get Washington State to, you know, seven, maybe occasionally eight wins, you know, year to year. Well, he's got a lot of recruiting to do. I think that the cupboard's pretty empty for him. Uh, you got so, a nice receiver out there. You got a nice so I, you know, this year's not going. He's not going to come in and just immediately turn it around. He didn't immediately really turn it around when he was at Texas Tech. They did okay when he was there starting out, but you know, he's got a lot of recruiting to do. He can do it. He's proved he's can he can do it. Before, you know, he's done it before basically. Um, but it, it'll be a rough start. They're not ready to. And this is going to shock y'all for me to use this term. They're not at the Pac-12 speed. Yeah. No, and and be honest with you. I mean, I know a lot of our fans would agree with this. I mean, what do you, what offense are you going to run that Oregon isn't already running anyway that they've all seen? So he's not going to bring anything like, oh, we've never seen this before. It's he's going to bring his style, and it's people are going to be used to it. But uh, if I know Mike Leach, he'll get Washington State to winning and getting them to bowl games, which is what they want right now. Right, they're not wanting to win a national title. You know, they might want to make a Rose Bowl every ten years. Right now, Cal is basically going to. They're still kind of rebuilding. They're still trying to find their find their groove and see what they can do. Right. Stanford is the real question I wanted to ask you guys. Now, Andrew Luck is gone. How big of an effect is that going to have on Stanford? Do they go back to mediocrity, or is it no? They can still do good, Brandon. I think Stanford will be okay. I don't think they're looking at 10 or 11 wins. I think that Stanford will be okay. A name that I want people to remember when you talk about Stanford football is going to be Shane Scove. Plays linebacker for Stanford. Excellent ball player. Got hurt early last year. Shane Scove. Remember that name. Stanford's going to be okay. I think the big question marks with Stanford is you know, they've taken it each year right on the chin, boom, boom. They lose Jim Harbaugh as their coach, and now they've lost Andrew Luck. Uh, can they keep the cons- consistency? Have they kept the consistency with recruiting? They've done pretty well uh, with their current coach. You know, Can they keep the consistency in winning? They weren't really terrible when Jim Harbaugh took over. They were, they were doing okay, but... You know, I think there's going to be a little bit of a drop off, but I can't say that they're going to be a contender like they've been the past few years. Could have been a contender, you know. Oh, I know. And, when the, <laughs> and the thing is, people will always say, "Well, Stanford, you know, runs the ball too, and they still got a good running back." But the thing is, like you said, Andrew Luck, he knew how to command the offense. He felt comfortable in it. You know, can this next quarterback come in and do what well, he does? What's his name? Is it Nunez? Is that his name? I think, if I remember right. Which one? The Stanford's quarterback. This yeah, year. yeah, Nunez. So he's, from what I've heard, he's had a really good fall camp. Cut from the same cloth. So, you know, if he's in, in the same system, you don't know really how much of a drop off, you know. They got one of the best tight ends in the country. So, so that's that's really going to help him out, uh, Zach Ertz. Now the thi- now when you talk about some of the other schools, Washington, Washington's there that they're getting, they've got an offense, they just don't have a defense, they can't stop anybody right now. Uh, the big one, Oregon State, a lot of people are still saying the Beavers. They don't know if they're there yet. The one I want to ask you guys, this seems to be everybody's consensus on who's going to win that division, and I'll ask you, Oregon Ducks, do they win the North Division, or no, is it going to be somebody else? Oregon wins it, but I'm looking at Oregon's schedule, okay? That Washington team uh, with, with that young quarterback, that Washington team is young. And they're going to get better. So that Washington October the sixth game, highlight that one. Also, going to USC, 
And then next week, going to Cal, one that Matthew uh, brought up to me. The last time that Oregon went up to Cal, every time they go up there, it's a little close. And Cal even snips them a couple of times. So look at look out for those few games. Right. Those are, are really, you know, kind of uh, some close games. And, you know, I think that they're going to win it by default, to be honest. I think that the, the North is not as strong as it has been, and Oregon's still – you know, fully loaded. They're, so they'll probably win. I think the the games to look out for, just the ones that Brandon just said, you know, Washington, USC, and, you know, if they lose to USC, could they recover when they go to Cal? Hey, you look at uh, Aliotti's defense, Oregon, people talk about the offense, but Aliotti has had that defense ranked in the top 25 the last few years, and Dion Jordan, one of the best defensive ends in the country. They got uh, excellent secondary, and the linebackers are solid-esque. I think some of the big storylines with the the Pac-12 North this year is not necessarily who's going to win it, but kind of the the issue with some of their coaching changes. Mm-hmm. You know, the Washington State just got a new coach. We've already talked about it with Mike Leach coming in there. But, you know, with Oregon State, can Mike Riley survive another year? You know, with Washington, I've heard that if he if Steve Sarkeesian has another good year, you know, pressure's on him at Washington. Does he stick around or does he try to go to a bigger job? You know, a, a supposedly better job. So there's uh, a lot of questions about that. I've even heard questions about Jeff Tedford at Cal. You know, there's that ten year mark that some coaches see where, you know, it just they get kind of complacent, they kind of get kind of lame when it comes to to wins losses. And there's been some rumblings out there with Jeff Tedford. He's a good coach, but you know it yeah. is a what, what have you done for me lately business. It really is. Now, we all agree that Oregon's probably going to win the North. They seem like the best team and the strongest. Now, in the South, the teams that are in there are pretty much who, Matt? We've got USC. Well, it's the, the Southern California teams, USC, UCLA. Uh, it's the Arizona teams, Arizona and Arizona State. And then... Uh, the two new teams, basically, Colorado and Utah. I guess we can still call them new. We're kind of a year out from yep. them joining. Right. Now, we all agree that Utah still trying to get acclimated to the Pac-12. Uh, getting better. They kept up. They played close last year. They, they didn't get blown out by anybody. But they're still trying to get their footing and still trying to see if they can compete week in and week That's out. That's something Brain and I were actually talking off air mm-hmm. earlier today. Um, Utah, yeah, they're still getting acclimated to that. Pac-12 speed, and not even the Pac-12 speed, but playing a... That grind. That grind. Getting in the grind, playing those tough conference opponents week in, week out. You know, they weren't too far away last year. And, Nine wins. Yeah. You know, they could, you know, make a little noise. They could uh, they could stir the pot a little bit this year. And they get USC at home October the 4th. Look out. Uh, they got that stud defensive tackle, uh, star Whatever his last name is, probably <laughs> one of the probably the top defensive linemen in the draft upcoming. Utah's loaded. People forget Utah that team that Utah team last year was full of freshmen, redshirt freshmen, and sophomores. Yeah, that's a big game to look at. Yeah. Is Utah USC? Now, no doubt. Now Colorado is probably the one that a lot of people are just saying that uh, if they're going to make a run at the South, it's going to be a while because they're just. They're not up to the par that everybody else There's is. There's a lot of rebuilding that's still got to go on there. That yep. they've, and they've torn that program apart. It's kind of sad. Exactly. Now And now Arizona and Arizona State. Now Arizona State we know has a brand new coach. Um, still with the Pac-12 and the coaching yeah, changes. Yep. That, that's kind of the, the big story out there right now. And then Arizona, if I'm correct, they've got a new coach. Right, oh, schools. Rich Rod. Yeah. yeah. So Rich Rodriguez is going to be bringing in another situation where he's bringing a, a spread-style offense, but it's nothing new in the Pac-12. Everybody runs their own different style. Um, I guess the, the we all are on consensus. We know UCLA, yes, I mean, Jim Moore is coming in as the, new, as the coach. But he's, it's his first year, and he's still got a lot of work to do. So I guess we would all agree, USC's probably going to win the South by default. They seem to be the best team, the most loaded, and they got the best talent right now. Oh, yes. I mean, you talk about USC. Uh, you can go down their roster, and you just go, damn, damn. When you look at uh, my man, that quarterback, Barkley, you look at Marquise Lee, probably the fastest player in college football. You look at him. You look at on the other side. Uh, I forgot what's the other kid. Uh, what's what's two two's name? 
Uh, number two, we're gonna call them number two, two right now. The, the defensive line, they just they are low. It the problem with USC that's their top. Dep- that's their top twenty two. That's yeah. the thing. Their top twenty two is as good as any team in America, but that's all they've got. I I, I would venture to say probably about their top forty five. I would say USC by default, but boy, we really got to look at that USC Utah game. That could be that, that could, could be, be very one. telling. And that Washington game on the road. Let's not forget that one because so, as soon as they leave Utah, they got to go to Washington. And I promise you, that Syracuse game on the road uh, on September eighth, it's going to be a little closer than people well, expect. And Sarkeesian and Kiffin both come from that school of Pete Carroll. So, and also we both saw it last year. USC Kiffin, even when they're doing great, he always slips up. That one game he's not supposed to lose. Last year it was Arizona State, and then he took Stanford down to the wire, and then he beat Oregon. But this year, I agree. I think that pretty much the Utah game, I think, is going to be the one that everybody's going to really be watching because Utah brings USC there, and it's very possible Utah and USC could both be undefeated. We know USC will be. But Utah's going to have a lot more, like we talked earlier, a little bit more depth. Yeah, and it's going to be a lot closer game. I think it's going to be a real good one. So we do have the consistency that the championship game for the Pac-12 is going to be Oregon, and it's going to be USC. Now, guys, I want to put you on the spot. Matt, first, who wins that game? Because now they meet in the they meet in the middle of the se- they meet in the season. I mean, it's possible that you know they meet October uh, looks like October twenty seventh when they meet each other. I mean, what happens the second time around? I mean, all that speed on that field. Kenyon Barner, DeAnthony Thomas, the Black Mamba, Mark, Mark are we, Lee. Are we talking about the first time or the second time that they meet? I'm going to talk about the second time. The second time that they meet. Where I, it matters. The <laughs> second time they meet, I think it's going to go Oregon's way. I really do. I think I think USC beats them the first time. USC beats them the second no. time. Because if they beat them the first time, guess what? you got to go come back to the Coliseum, play the championship game. USC has something going for them that Oregon doesn't have. Look at the size of the defensive lineman in the front seven of USC. By the first week in December, USC is going to probably be hurting with that situation with the depth, which is something that Oregon doesn't have to worry about. And another kind of intangible, I think that uh, Chip Kelly is a heck of a lot better coach than Lane Kiffin. I, I wouldn't say that. Oh, are you kidding? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it when we get into our SEC preview, but... Lane Kiffin is a better coach than people want to give him credit for. I, I would agree. He's a good coach. He is a good recruiter. The depth is I just going to really be I a think question, a, I think, guys. He's a good recruiter. I don't know how good of a coach he is. He surrounds himself with decent coaches. His dad, for one. <laughs> um, but, you know, that Tampa 2 is still gimmicky. It's like the spread. Teams can figure it out. Yeah, I mean, the thing about it is, you look at USC last year, it took a while for that defense, that, that defense to come along. It was Lane Kiffin's play call and his offense would carry them until that, that young defense. Keep, keep Don't forget, they started three true freshmen at linebacker. So so we are inconsistent. It's going to be Oregon and USC. Now where we're divided is who's going to win the conference. Well, that right there covers the WAC and the Pac-12. Stay tuned because coming up next, we're going to the Mountain West and we're going to the Big 12. Yes, the new and improved Big 12. Big 12? So stay tuned for The Locker Room. This is our preseason picks.